Hello, this is Richard White with the Polytechnic School EdTech Instructional Screencast on free and open source software. In this five minute presentation, we're going to compare commercial software with free and open source software and show you how you can get started experimenting with Linux. If you use computers that run either Microsoft's Windows operating system or Apple's OS X, then you're familiar with the idea of paying for software. Both the operating systems themselves and most of the important programs that run on them, Microsoft Office, Adobe Photoshop, Apple's Final Cut Pro, are licensed and sold, and you are legally required to pay for them. It may come as a surprise that in a Mac or PC world, there is a third option, and one that is entirely free. This operating system is called Linux, and is able to run on any Apple or Windows machine. Most of the software written for this operating system, web browsers, email programs, word processing and spreadsheet packages, is free as well. The free philosophy actually distinguishes between two different kinds of freedom, gratis versus libre, although it's easier to use the terms free and open source. Gratis means at no cost. Software that is free means that you can get and run the software without having to pay anything for it. Software that is libre, on the other hand, is open source in that a programmer can see into the source code, modify it, and even redistribute the code under certain conditions. To help identify the subtle difference between these two, people sometimes distinguish between free software and open source software with two phrases. Free as in speech refers to the open source aspect, because you are free to express yourself via rewriting and redistributing the code. Free as in beer refers to the no expense aspect of the software, although critics note that beer is rarely free, so this doesn't make as much sense as it might. When people hear about Linux for the first time, there are usually a lot of questions. How can this be free? How can something free be any good? This can't be very popular if I've never heard of it. The philosophy and a lot of the code behind the free and open source movement is courtesy of Richard Stallman, who strongly believes that computers and software should be free of any commercial restrictions. Linus Torvalds wrote the Linux kernel, which is at the heart of the Linux operating system, which runs most free and open source software. Although Linux has many strengths, and in fact is the dominant operating system for web servers, it isn't nearly as popular on laptop or desktop machines. If Windows machines are for business people and Macs are for artists, Linux is primarily for scientists, students, and experimenters, although there are plenty of normal people who use it too. Linux has a wide variety of software available, including packages that work with Microsoft Office files. One thing to note, Windows and Mac operating systems, being commercial products, tend to attract developers who are competing economically. As a result, both Windows and Mac software tends to have better interfaces and usability, especially where editing audio and video media are concerned. The different flavors of Linux are called distributions, and currently the most popular and user-friendly distro is called Ubuntu. Let's see what Ubuntu looks like. Here I'm looking at the desktop in Ubuntu 12.04. There's nothing spectacular to see that's different from any other Mac or PC laptop that you might use. Instead of the taskbar that you have in Windows, or the dock that you have on a Mac, there's a launcher on the left side of the Ubuntu screen that you use to coordinate your activities on the computer. You can check your email, surf the internet, create Word-compatible documents, work with your Dropbox account, Skype people, listen to MP3 music files, and stream Netflix movies, just as you would on a Mac or PC. For just about every commercial piece of software, there's a free open source equivalent. And just as there are some differences between Macs and PCs, you can expect that things are going to work a little differently in Linux. If you decide to try Linux, it's a good idea to play around with it some before considering doing a full installation. As you might expect from an operating system that is designed for experimentation, an Ubuntu Live CD will allow you to do just that. To try out Linux without actually installing it, use any PC or Mac with the CD DVD drive, get a copy of an Ubuntu Live CD, you can contact the author of this presentation for a copy. Insert the CD drive into your computer and restart the machine so that you're booting from the CD. Your machine will take a little longer to boot than normal because it's having to load up the operating system from the CD rather than from your hard drive. 
When Ubuntu launches, don't click Install. You're probably not ready for that kind of commitment just yet. Try launching a browser and surfing the internet, or creating a document in LibreOffice. Ubuntu will run more slowly than it would if it were installed on your hard drive, but you'll be able to get some idea of how it all works. This presentation has been a brief introduction to free and open source software. If you have any questions or need assistance, please feel free to contact the narrator at rwhite at polytechnic.org. This has been a Polytechnic School EdTech instructional screencast by Richard White. Thanks for watching.